and really go up against a knife. I'm here with my buddy Ron Kazakowski. He is kind of a legend in Filipino martial arts. He's a bladed weapons expert. If you're into Forge with Fire, they copied some of his knives on the show. I invited Ron to come and test out some of these moves. I'm gonna follow the force. So we're here, and then you go right for the throat, hit the hand again, and then go right for the eyes. That's it, yes. Even if you don't use the fan and open the fan, yeah. just as a baton, you <laughs> so hit the hand, go for the throat, hand again, jab oh. in the eyes. Yep. Yeah. Yes, that definitely trapped me up. And I can't come back when you have the fan. So in other words, if I come in here, I can't do this. Yep, that definitely traps me up. That hurts, and then bam, good. <laughs> yes. Does the fan actually have enough heft to go up against a knife? I've seen these fans before, and I've only seen the cheaper version, so I could see why people would think this doesn't have enough uh, weight and or heft to make some sort of impact. This thing is solid. This looks like each rib looks like it's, whoop, I opened it up the wrong way. It looks like it's like a eighth of an inch thick. Um, this is no cheap fan, this one. I could see where, you know, you could do some whacking with this. You could definitely jab. Uh, you could probably even jab in the midsection for distraction and go across the face into the eyes. The impact is good. I could see this as a deceptive woman's uh, self-defense weapon. Definitely, I could see what's going on there. Uh, when you open it up and when, when she trapped me up with the fan, I couldn't uh, come back with another shot. How this here now I can't reshoot in she's trapping my arm up I, I can't um, come back with another slash or thrust and then she could hit the hand right here which will disarm me then goes right for the throat and the eyes bottom right up into the palm so you're holding it yes, okay. yeah so it's right up here and okay. you're holding it you get that thumb on one end and make sure that the bottom is right up in your palm yeah, and then let the weight of gravity pull it down, and your pinky is going to keep the okay. other side uh, open. So you've got the ribs on the top and the bottom. Sink shoulder down and drive forward. Yeah. Yeah, right. Sink shoulder down. Sink shoulder down, drive forward. So sink the shoulder down, get the body weight down in your feet when you open it. So you're not using your uh, arms. You're yes. using okay. your body. Yes, yes. So now I'm using the weight of my body uh, into it. Yes. Just like hitting, you lower your center. Of That's right, lower your yes. center. So that way you have a really strong grip in your hand. But of course, the strongest grip is when you have it closed and use it as an yes. impact weapon. Yeah, All right, this is a weapon of deception. Hopefully you guys saw that it really is effective from what we showed you. Now go over to Ron's channel because he's going to continue part two of our conversation and he's going to show you other weapons of deception that women have used in history. Hey Ron, I see you and Shirley just made a cool video about the Chinese fan. Can you tell us more about it and other cultures that have weapons like this? Yes, um, uh, actually uh, every culture has uh, women's self-defense weapons that they could carry, something small. Uh, the fan is definitely a good weapon. This is a good uh, impact weapon and uh, a good bladed weapon if you get the ones that have the, uh, the edge on, on them. Uh, this is quite a weapon and it's common to carry. You know, it's, it's a, a feeling of comfort for when it's hot days and whatnot. So it's not illegal to carry. That's another thing. Um, well, depends if it's bladed. <laughs> mm -hmm. But every culture has that. So you're going to see palm sticks. 
uh, things women uh, wear in their hair. Um, there's, there's a lot of different things like that. I mean, weapons of deception could be dirt from the ground and throw it in the eyes and then run or attack or whatever. Um, I've got here some karambits. So these are the TFW karambits. Um, this is the more modern sheath, but this is common for women to carry in self-defense. From what I understand, even today, they still carry this kind of weapon, okay? Um, now, this is a more modern sheath, right? But uh, the thing is, this is the ancient sheath where women would carry this in what they would wear. So say they got a scarf wrapped around their um, their, their uh, stomachs or uh, chest or whatever, they would wear it in there somewhere hidden so it could be drawn out really quick and you could see the shots that go, uh, you know, either to the groin or to the throat. You could jab to the eyes with this. You could jab to the stomach then rip out, things like that. So up close and personal, these kind of things work. Um, that goes with the palm sticks, everything they wear in their hair. It's just... You know, you go for the vital areas of the body, and then they escape. That's what these are all for. So um, I, I think of these, these different cultures and everything are interesting to look into. A lot of people don't even know about that. They just think of swords, sticks, and knives, but you'd be surprised how much is out there.